So I ended up uh, laying out a PC board for the pulse width modulation LED circuit. Um, and I have some boards back. Uh, thanks again to PCB Way for sponsoring the channel, giving me free PC boards. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll end up putting this on my share site in case anybody wants to uh, wants a circuit like this. But uh, yeah, it turned out, turned out really nice. The big feature here is uh, the MSI Dog logo. Uh, <laughs> I think the other board I did, I had an actual MSI computer and uh, this one has an MSI Dog on it. So. Okay, let's uh, take a look at what the board looks like loaded. Um, I didn't have a, a 500 ohm uh, blue pot for here, which would have been nice, but I'll need to get one of those. And there is one cut and jump. You'll notice there's a big a jump here and there's a jump here. So no cuts involved, just jumps, two jumps, one jump. So uh, the problem is um, I have a... Uh, uh, sawtooth wave generator here and it goes into a comparator so I can do this the, the uh, select a line here on the um, on the on the waveform and that does my pulse with modulation that operates uh, centered around ground so my comparator needs to go plus and minus and I call that a LM393 thinking it was a plus and minus device but it's not it's a ground reference device I forgot it's a dual ground reference device and I just grabbed the wrong, wrong part so I'm going to have to swap it out for something that would work. Uh, and then it goes into the constant current source and modulating that uh, just as the circuit we saw before. Anyway, so I'm going to be using a, a LM311, which is a bipolar part and it has a, a separate uh, emitter and collector output so you can tie it correctly. So what you need to do is you need to tie pin one of that op amp to ground and then pin seven is your new, your new pin one. It used to use pin one but now pin one's been grounded so you need to uh, <clears throat> lift pin one tie it to ground and then short one and seven together and then it all works so anyway let's uh let's hook it up and i'll show you how it works all right so here we go um let's put a scope on the uh triangle wave generator which will be on uh, pin uh pin seven and we can go over here and we can see a big glare. Uh, I don't know why there's such a big glare in here. Oops, just a second. <clears throat> All right, we'll come over here to pin seven and uh, we can see a triangle wave. Very, very nice. And then we can take a look at the output of the comparator, which is pin seven. And so here is our um, pulse width modulation. If I turn the uh, pulse width modulation, I can go 100% to, to zero. And so pulse width modulation is working a treat. I'll just leave it here at 50%. And then uh, the uh, current <clears throat> regulation works as well. Okay, so let's um, hook this up to an LED. Oops, let's ground here. Let's turn on the LED with some current. All right, so I've hooked up an LED and uh, I can twiddle the current, adjustable current. So here, current is zero and I can bring the current up very, very uh, strong. All right, so there, uh, current is going. All right, and then I can twiddle the uh, pulse width modulation and I can dim it and make it bright uh, with, the, uh, with the pulse width modulation as well. All right, so let's take a look at some waveforms here. Uh, this is the uh, drive current. So if I uh, take a look at the bottom is actually the drive current that uh, Regulation is being done on the negative side of the LED. So the closer this is to ground, the, the more current that it's drawing. Okay. And so I'm watching my um, supply drawing about 30 milliamps here, about 50 milliamps here. Okay. And uh, we'll just leave it there. And then I can adjust the, uh, I can adjust the pulse width modulation. You can see that's, that's working good. It's just hard to trigger on. All right. Um, I do have a little bit of overshoot, 
Um, I did leave a, a position on the um, PC board for dampening capacitor. Uh, here's one added, and it's rolling it off. Probably too big. This is a 0 0.01. Oh, there we go. That's nice. You see the uh, a bit small there, but uh, one and a half uh, uh, nanofarads uh, cuts it down quite a bit. That's pretty nice. So it probably needs about five nanofarads. I'll just have to find one. Anyway, um, I need to have my friend come over, see if he likes it or not. I can adjust the brightness with pulse width modulation. And um, it doesn't turn off all the way, though. Hmm. I don't know if he's going to like that or not. Uh, I guess it doesn't go down all the way. All right, I fixed with it, and I, I've, got it, I've got it working good now. So I can uh, use the pulse modulation, and it goes all the way down to, uh, goes down to uh, off now. Um, so the problem I was having was component selection. So let me take a look at, let me show you what I did. Um, it had to do with, uh, with this circuit right here, uh, where I was pulling down with the uh, 2N7000. And uh, I remember now that the 2N7000 has like a 50 ohm on resistance. And so it wasn't enough pull down in order to turn it off all the way. And so I needed to modify these two settings to be a bit higher so that 50 ohms can swamp it. So I changed this 500K resistor to 1000K and I changed this 1K to a 10K. So now it, uh, now it can overcome everything and uh, it works just fine. So I just had to make that one change there. Um, so yeah, there we go. So I'll need to have my uh, friend come take a look at it. Uh, it does seem to be working. Uh, we can modulate uh, the brightness of a uh, LED two different ways, either current or pulse width modulation. And uh, we can now turn it off all the way. And yeah, that's working. That's on all the way and that is off all the way. So yeah, that's working good. All right, so there we go.